Hi, Delroy the Spark here again. Uh, I'm back at that industrial unit to do some remedial work. Right, so um, I've got the first one, unit one. There isn't much in there. Just want to get that out of the way. But unit two, there's a bit more, a bit more work to do. And um, uh, so I'm going to get on with it and um, film it and hopefully you can watch it. Thank you. Bye. I've got to uh, change that emergency fitting. Got to change that um, damaged socket, but I think they want um, some extra sockets put in this area as well. Right, um, there was an earth fault here, so I've got to sort that out. Uh, comes from here, so hopefully it's just some connection there. Got to fit a new light fit in there, which I forgot to get, but I have to go and get that. Yeah, I think this must have been some sort of kitchen at one time, but now it's just a store and they're going to use that socket. If they use that socket, it needs to be RCD protected. So I'm going to put one on there. And it's just a matter of um, labelling up some stuff. So this there isn't that much in, in this, this one. And um, do you remember when I was doing, doing the test here? I couldn't get my ZE and all that sort of palaver. And... <coughs> Because on the form it says by measurement or inquiry. Now I try to do that inquiry business for the first time ever with UK Power Network. <laughs> it's a joke, <laughs> complete joke. <coughs> you can't get no information by inquiry from what I've found that anyway, I'll go into that later on. Anyway, I'm just gonna get on with it and see how it goes. When you're putting up fittings like this with these beezer boxes, I think it's best. What they should have had here is a T box, either T that way or T down here, and you fit the fit into the wall. They fit it to the box, which to me is not the best way, because now my fitting, the one that I've got, is not really made to fit to a box. It hasn't got those holes to drill out. So I'm gonna have to sort of measure it and mark it up if I could, I'd have put a, replaced the tea box, then I'm going to have to pull out all these wires. It just makes the job a lot harder, so I can't. I'm just going to fit it the way it was. But I think you should initially, when they've done the job, they should put a tea box here. So you, you just, you've got a spout here, just butt up your fit in, um, lock nut it and fix it to the wall. So that when you come to change it, there's no problem. Just take it off. Don't have to worry about the box. And it's just like if you're wiring along putting up some fittings say on the outside of a building along the wall i don't think it's good to come up with the conduit to the fitting put your fitting in and go through like wiring through the fitting i don't think that's right i think you should come with a box wire through the boxes and you fit the, the, the um, fittings on top or below to the wall not to the box not to the so that means for instance if something, say this is one, one of the fittings here that you've wired through and there's a fault, you have to pull out all them wires, take out, take that fitting down, there, 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 there's a gap now, there's a gap there because all your wires are hanging out. Whereas if you add it in a box, you could just terminate the, con the cables in the box while you get that fitting or deal with that fitting. It wouldn't affect the rest of the circuit. I uh, hope you understand what I'm saying, but um, yeah, it's best not to, when you're doing these things, best not to fit to the box, fit to the wall. If you're putting fittings along a wall, wire through a box and fit the fitting to the wall. There's the fitting up, green lights on, says, let you know that it's charging. Um, took, me, took me a lot longer than it should have, because um, trying to get the, the fixings at the back diagonal to fit the box was a bit, I had to sort of widen them and all them sort of stuff. Put washers on them to keep them firm. And look, see that? Shaky. It would be better if it was sitting against the wall, nice and solid, but it's okay. But um, that's not the way I would fix them if I was doing it from scratch. So um, I've tested them. It comes on when the power goes out. I'll show you that. Here we go. It's on. So now what I'm gonna do is change that um, 32 amp to a RCBO. Now these mem shield things, they're not, 
you don't just get take that out and go and buy an RCBO and put it in. They do these these pods, what they call it, these pods. You have to take that out, attach this to it, and then that's your RCBO. And these are bloody expensive as well. They're not cheap, mate. Anyway, I'll get on with that, see how it goes. Right, so that's the instructions. I've done these before, but it's not something I do regularly. So I always make sure I check the instructions. So that's them there. I'm going to try and follow them, see if I can get it done. <laughs> That's it. That's where I've got to put it. Where that that looks like that's a ten mil, yeah, definitely a ten mil. So, got to connect that ten mil in, and then put that um, converted MCB into RCBO in. Okay. Right. Yeah. So there is my um, RCBO. That one there, connected and everything still off, and. Um, just wanted to let you know. See, the connection for the phase is at the back and it's right far into the um, the, the um, RCBO. So you've got to make sure you've stripped it long enough and make sure you've pushed it right in. What I'd done first time, I pushed it in, tightened my screw as much as I could, and then what I always do is give it a little tug with my long nose to make sure that it's caught and it's not moving. And it was moving, it come right out. I hadn't caught it. What I had done, I usually, I usually connect, when it's RCBOs, I usually connect the cables in first and then push the RCB on, RCBO in. So I know I've got good connections, but it's awkward in this fuse board. There's loads of cables. So what I'd done, I put the RCBO in make sure the catch at the back is caught properly so it's not moving. Then I put my cables in. But what I'd done, I'd forgotten to make sure that this screw was open wide, that the connection was open wide enough to get my cable in. So when I put it in first time, I'd put it behind the connection and it just tightened. So it's a good thing I just didn't, I didn't leave it because if I hadn't have done that, that might have it would have probably showed me that it was working, but it would obviously it's not tight, so it'd just be arcing. And then eventually you'd have a fault. This would be all melted at the back over here. So I took it out, undo the screw as wide as I could, pushed it back in, tightened it up. That time I'd caught it, put my old long nose on it, give it a pull to make sure, and it was nice and tight, so I know it's connected nice and tightly. So I'm going to go and switch it on now and go and test it. This is 0 0.21 don't know if it's different from when i done it the last time so um let's check the trip time Okay, see what the readings are. Eighteen point nine, twenty eight point nine, eighteen point nine, nine point three oh. Um, so twenty eight point nine is the one I'm going to put down because that's on the times one. They don't um, on the Nikki form that I do. They don't ask for the for the times five, just the times one. So that's the one I'm going to note. So there's the boiler there. Uh, there's a connection. I'm getting no earth continuity here. So I'm going to have a look at the spur up. One of them spurs up there controls it. So I'm going to have a look there and see if there's a loose connection there or something. Okay, so 
this is what I, what I want to show you. Right, so it's not loose connections. What happened here is, if I go between phase, hopefully you can see my tester. If I go between earth and phase in, phase coming out. 240 volts, yeah? If I go to be to phase on the load side, phase to earth, nothing, yeah? Nothing. Now this is working perfectly. If I go to phase to earth on the load side, 240 volts, hopefully you can see that. The red light's on 240 volts, yeah? So, that's fine. This one now, look at this. these things out of the way. Hopefully you can see all this. Right. I go neutral, neutral load and neutral in. <laughs> 240 volts, 239, yeah? Can you see that? <laughs> that's, the, that's across the neutral in and the neutral out. And I go neutral to earth 240 volts. I go live to live, 240 volts. <laughs> so there's obviously something wrong at this switch here, so I'm gonna have to get a new one of those. And you can guarantee, I'm gonna have to, I'll probably have to change the old box because I doubt I'm gonna get one of these to fit that box. So I'm probably ending up changing the whole box. Okay, never mind, I have to get on with it. So I'm gonna, Try and change this um, spur now. I've got a new spur. I'm gonna try and fit this one. Uh, let's just see how it goes. Well, first of all, the spur that I got, um, one of the popular makes, it's, it's slightly bigger, the box is slightly bigger. So I thought, oh, I don't want to go for the aggro of having to take off this box and all that, undo everything and put it back. So I went and got another spur that would fit it. But when I first came up to unscrew this, I noticed it was only on one screw. So obviously I thought, oh, I just didn't bother to put that screw in. So, got this spur now, connected it, push it back, screwing it up. This, this sear wouldn't screw in. They'd, they'd mullered the hole, it was too big. The screw just went in and moved in and out, wouldn't screw in. So in the end, I had to take, I had to take it all off. And good thing I did have this smaller type sort of spur. Um, good I did have that because um, the boxes lined up nicely. The one that I've got, I think I'd have had to do some sort of alteration, maybe, I don't know, but so I just decided to fit that. <laughs> that's what that's what that's what all the drama was. Because uh, here, this guy, um, this person, they um you got the box like that, they got a spur like I got, the original spur, and they fitted it, but it's much bigger than the box. Right? And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to just fit a bigger spur on top of it, so it overlaps like this. But um, I, um, I uh, caused myself aggravation anyway. But it's all done. All done, sweet. Good. Get on to the next task. So at that point there, I couldn't get any earth continuity, so I couldn't measure ZS. So now I've fitted the new spur. Let's see what I get. No point three nine. That's good. Right. 
So I'm going to change this light, light fit in there, um, in this um, toilet. Um, again, they fixed it to the visa box, which is not the best really. Yeah, this is, like I said, they fixed it to the visa box. And look, see, now, I, don't, I mean, I wouldn't do that. I would have fitted it to the ceiling. So, yeah, I'd, I'd have fitted it to the ceiling. Um, I put a, I'd have put a through box and just butt it up to the box and that's it. That's how I do it when I do these from scratch. But that's how they've got it here. The cable's already in. I'll just have to do it the way they've done it. But look, that's not good, is it? Right, I've got that fitting up. Um, I put some short bits of conjure there to stabilise it. It's much, much firmer now, yeah? Because I didn't want to have to worry cutting conjures and all that sort of stuff. So I just done that. It's better than it was. It's nice and sturdy now. Yep, nice and sturdy. Good, so I'm going to connect it, get it on. Hopefully it's working. <laughs> Go. It's up and working. Right, so that's all good. Put the cover on and everything will be sweet. See it there? Cover on, all working. Now, that putting that spur up was a drama. Was a real drama. Um, right, I'm going to replace those. Um, I'm going to fit three sockets, three twin sockets there to save them having to use this extension, okay? They've been using that extension, they say they want three sockets, they don't have to use an extension, which is good. Um, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna put metal ones up because it's more suited to an industrial place than like this because see that one there is broken. Fit metal ones, more durable, better for this sort of application, I reckon. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do, okay? Do our ZS now that we've got the sockets installed, see what we get. Point five three. Right, okay. Point five five, which makes sense, that's the furthest one away. So that makes sense. So now I'm gonna um, 
label these sockets here. Right, so these ones are on 4L1 at the fuse board. So that's why I'm going to label them. There it is. Yep, so that's that done. And you, you notice I cleaned out all the dust out of the box, boxes. Um, a lot of people, when I go around to jobs, there is so much rubble in some of these boxes. It's terrible. But I always clean them out. If I have someone, an apprentice working with me, I always give them a brush. So brush out your boxes, make sure you don't leave any, de any debris in there. Well, uh, that's the end of another day at this industrial thing. You see that thing with the, with the dodgy spur? I've come across that before. I um, fitted a uh, storage um, eater for someone once and um, when I went to connect it to the spur I, I said I looked at it I said I think you should change this spur because the movement on the switch wasn't very good I, you just know that it wasn't good and it was old really old and painted but the customer looked at me like suspiciously like I was trying it on because she's they'd called me in to do the storage eater now i'm saying their spur needs changing they look like they didn't believe me so i didn't push it i said okay cool left it connected it next uh got it all um yeah connected it and it's not going to come on till during the night so next morning they phoned me first thing oh the heater was giving off a bad bad smell it was getting hot burning smell so i ran down there thinking what what have i done you know what have i done wrong so anyway, when I got there, yep, the, you could see on the heater, the brand new heater just out the box, you could see the brown mark that was bur burnt on the metal when I took it, when I took it apart. Tested it, um, and then it came back to my mind about the spur. So I said to him, I t uh, the guy that told me not was suspicious, he wasn't there, his brother was there. So I said, I said to your brother to change the spur, but he didn't want to. When I checked it, I found just like what I found there. Neutral was live, earth, neutral was live, earth alive was live, everything was live. And um, so I said, well, to prove it, what I'll do, I just put a, I put a lead on it with a plug and plugged it into a socket. And I said, well, I couldn't stay, I had to go away. I said, I took an appointment. Well, let me know if, it can't, if it's working. He phoned me up and said, yeah, it's all working good all working good and um when i went back now the brother who told me not to change it who wasn't didn't want it want me to change it he was there and he was saying no nah, there's something wrong with the heater mate the heater there's something that was not good for purpose i said no the spur needs changing and he wouldn't have it so anyway i, I just walked i just left it there's nothing much, much more i could do they then contact me. They got another electrician in who said nothing wasn't wrong with the spur. It was the heat. <laughs> All sorts of rubbish. But anyway, um, to and fro, back and fro with letters until, uh, you know, they had no case. It was silly. Just a couple of pounds to um, change a spur and they didn't want to do it, you know, and it caused all that grief. Anyway, it's all good. Uh, I'm off to another, to emergency now. I'm going to have a look at it, see what I can do. So I'll see you on that job. Thanks for watching.